Alterations in Immunity and Hematology, HIV and AIDS. AIDS is an infectious and potentially fatal disorder that weakens the immune system. HIV is the pathogen that causes AIDS. And HIV people who are positive can infect others even if they're asymptomatic. HIV and AIDS is considered a pandemic. 34 million are infected per the World Health Organization. The occurrence is stronger in homosexual men, IV drug users, heterosexual women, and healthcare workers. When AIDS first became very prevalent back in the 80s, uh, mortality was really high when you were diagnosed with AIDS, but that is declining in um, recent times. There are two subtypes. We have HIV-1, which mutates easily and frequently. It's the more prevalent form in the United States. HIV-2 is less transmittable, and there's a longer interval between the virus and AIDS. Western Africa is the primary site of this infection. With HIV, it does require a living host to survive. It's basically genetically incomplete, which allows for T-cell lymphocyte fusion. So basically, the HIV virus will then connect to the T-cell co-receptors more easily. Early inhibitors uh, include the development of a new category of antiretroviral drugs. There are also some replication enzymes with HIV. We have the reverse transcriptase, which copies the viral RNA, in other words, uh, the virus from the, R or the RNA from the virus to the DNA of the virus. Then integrase will incorporate that viral DNA into the host cell DNA. So that allows the cell to begin to replicate. And then protease, which frees the replicated viral particles into the cytoplasm of the cell. It is transmitted through body fluids, such as blood, semen, vaginal secretions, and breast milk. High risk factors to contract AIDS is unprotected sexual intercourse, multiple sexual partners, sharing of IV needles, and non-autologous transfusions, and an infected mother to infant transmission. Prevention strategies include abstaining from sexual intercourse, or if you are going to uh, engage in sexual intercourse, making sure that you're at least using condoms. Avoid casual sex with multiple partners. Use a condom or spermicide that has non-oxanol 9 in it. Abstain from using IV drugs that contribute to disinhibition and hypersexuality. And bank self-donated or autologous blood or directed donor blood. Nursing uh, needs to make sure they maintain standard precautions and report any needle sticks or sharp injuries. A client with AIDS indicates that more teaching about the condition is needed when the nurse hears which of the following statements. I'm afraid to touch anyone. I might give them my disease. AIDS is the end stage of the HIV infection. The criteria to be diagnosed with the actual AIDS is a markedly decreased amount of T cell four or the T4 cells and development of certain cancers along with opportunistic infections. Classifications of the diagnosis of AIDS would be category one, two, or three, or category A, B, or C. So AIDS impairs the inability of the infected T4 cells to recognize foreign antigens and stimulate B cell lymphocytes. The rate of progression is going to be dependent on the concentration of the virus in the blood, the subtype and strain of HIV, 
and the status of the co-receptors on the CD4 cells, along with effective drug treatment. Assessment findings are going to include acute retroviral syndrome, which might be mistaken for the flu. Clients may also experience fever, swollen and tender lymph nodes, pharyngitis, a rash, muscle and joint pain, liver and spleen enlargement, weight loss, Kaposi sarcoma, which is a type of connective tissue cancer, pneumocystitis, pneumonia, and an abnormal PAP test or PID. Different diagnostic tests are going to include the ELISA test, Western blot, and a total T cell count. We look at the viral load in order to guide drug therapy and determine the progression of the disease. We might also do some cancer screening and pap cervical tests. A client with AIDS is unable to cough because of weakness and fatigue, so this client is at risk for ineffective airway clearance. So to manage HIV and AIDS, we administer antiretroviral drug therapy, which targets viral enzymes, and a highly active antiretroviral therapy called HEART. Problems with this therapy include drug resistance or drug cross resistance. We also look at the CD4 count to uh, help guide treatment along with pregnancy or HIV-associated renal disease and hepatitis B. Drug therapy goals are going to be to keep the CD4 cell count above 350. It needs to be have an undetectable viral load level also. Adjunct drug therapy will include hydroxyurea, which is used to treat cancer, and cytokines, which stimulate the production of lymphocytes. There are also some clinical trials out for an AIDS vaccine. Complications related to AIDS include opportunistic infections. This can be the pneumocystitis pneumonia, pneumonia, mechanical ventilation, aerosol therapy, deep suctioning, and we may have to administer Bactrim or Septra for these diseases. Candidiasis, which is a yeast infection, cytomegalovirus, or CMV, which can cause blindness, ulcers in the esophagus, colitis, pneumonia, and encephalitis. Cryptosporidiosis protozoan is, can cause a diarrhea that leads to dehydration and electrolyte imbalance. And we may also do stool testing for ova and parasites. Another complication is AIDS dementia complex, or ADC. This causes degeneration of the brain, affects the client's mood, cognition, and motor functions. And distal sensory polyneuropathy, which causes abnormal sensations, such as burning and numbness. Nurses need to engage in health teaching which would include HIV prevention strategies such as sexual abstinence and safer sexual practices, diagnostic screenings and counseling, especially for anyone that uh, is at risk for HIV and AIDS, antiretroviral drug teaching and teaching having to do with any of the uh, side effects, etc support groups and resource referrals. We also need to reduce occupational risks, which would include our standard precautions. And this also includes the safe handling of needles and sharp instruments, the appropriate transport of specimens of body fluids in leak-proof containers, cleaning and disinfecting utility gloves, and removing any barrier garments appropriately and disposing of them appropriately. Client teaching would include medication regimen and goals, 
the maintenance of or gaining of weight, fluid intake to report weight loss, avoiding exposure to people with infections, daily bathing, frequent rest periods, and no sharing of IV needles and do not donate any blood. So a client with AIDS is at risk for imbalanced nutrition related to anorexia, nausea, or mouth sores. Nursing interventions that may help alleviate symptoms that interfere with intake or nutrient use include all of the following except restricting fluids to promote ease of swallowing in clients with oral ulcerations. Ethical issues include financial and insurance implications. Some clients may have a fear of disclosure of their HIV status, thinking it may affect their employment, health insurance coverage, or housing. Viatical se uh, settlements will name a person as a beneficiary to life insurance in exchange for immediate cash. And this is usually done by an attorney or licensed insurance broker.